I'm not an expert lab digger, but basically the theory is there's a burrow between the cast, uh, which is that bit there, and then the hole, I think of that as like the breathing hole. So somewhere in a U underneath there is the worm dug down in there. Generally, you'd use sort of wide um, pronged forks. I've actually got a spade today. The theory is, if I dig down there, that's where the worm is. Should we have a look? <laughs> it's quite wet, the sand here. Obviously, you don't want to break the worm. So this is the venue I'm going to fish and I'm interested about this pool here. Once that water breaks over the little sandbank there, you can see in the distance about there, uh, it'll go into a lot deeper water. It's about four or five foot of water in there already, which will rise to between six or ten foot when the tide pushes over it. And I'm hoping that that will hold some of those um, soul that we're after today. As you can see, it's probably quite conducive to being a a good bass venue here. You can see where the waves are breaking again in the distance there. It's obviously indicating the shallow water and you've got this little inlet. So once the tide moves over that sandbank this could be a really good area to fish. Maybe putting uh, one bait into the deeper water here and of course into that deep pool there. Also fish, particularly bass, might work along here especially where the surf's breaking. But it's all good in theory. <laughs> Let's get out and fish, see what we got. Uh, so I've got some of the fresh lug and we just dug. That's that stuff there. We've got some that's been in the fridge um, all night as well. Look at that, Look a bit stickier. 130 grams and the 170 gram leads. Not too much of a swell out there today, so. Those should hold bottom nicely and of course the of course the old continental rod will cast that with ease the rigs that we're going for you can see there that's sprung and clipped three hooks someone was asking about where you tie the line and where the leader goes so the leader would come for those of you that are new to it the leader comes onto the top swivel of the rig um, and that is usually a swivel rather than a leg clip because the leg clip at the bottom of the rig that's in my right hand there that's where obviously the lead clips onto so main line onto a leader if you're using a leader ties directly onto there we've got plenty of knot videos if you want to look at those fire and one fixed ball done I've cast out on the sandbank from this fixed ball uh, so although I've got braid there, I've probably got about 200 yards of braid come off and down to the, well, what in effect is the backing line on there as well, 15 pound mono. The idea being that I'm in a little gully while the tie comes in. The only problem is the bait's been out there for about half an hour, so it'll start to lose its effectiveness. So we've got a little silver eel here. They're a protected species, so I want to get this one back in. Some people say you could put your three fingers like that to get them, but I, I don't think that works. I've just got to shake it off the hook if I can. Got to be a little bit tough with these, unfortunately.
sometimes worth when you've caught an eel just to check that snood because they've twisted it round and round and might well replace that uh, that's not great it weakens the line and you're more likely to tangle again as for the rig we've done one of these before actually uh, this loop rig uh, with the cascade swivels um, but today I'm just using this as a three hook flapper with the size two hooks you can see I put the worm on uh, some head first and some tail first I've got plenty of lug here so we've got six hooks in total out should be a good little bait trail for the fish I'm going to walk this one into the deeper water over here you can see a good way to spot whether the water is shallow is obviously where the breaking tide is so obviously I've left the camera back with you but I've got, I've got the microphone on basically I want to put it in this deeper water here where it comes into the gully back towards the camera let's give it a go and this is actually the first time there's someone walking a dog there this is the first time I've seen someone on this beach now all I'm going to do is do like a half pendulum drop with this three hook flapper and then just gently lob it so I just really need the tide coming in over it I've got the two rods set up here getting little bites on the uh, rod on the left actually bouncing around a bit I'll have a check of that in a minute I think that looks like eels unfortunately the dreaded eels uh, but when I turn the camera around I know that's into the wind there I'm not sure if you can hear me all right but where that surf's breaking by that rock that was the deep pool we were looking at earlier so it's almost time, as long as the fish can run along that gully, uh, to cast into that nice little deep pool up there maybe. You can see the tide certainly coming in nicely. Let's go and have a feel of this uh, rod on the left. Feels really heavy this um, rod and reel, but I'm so used to the Continental now. Obviously, I need to oil it a bit. <laughs> Get some weed on the line. Oh no, there's something here. What have we got a little bass. Hello. Oh. Playing it in shallow water. <laughs> it's definitely better. <laughs> oh, 
hell of a way. Oh, it's gone. Ah. No, hang on. Maybe. Maybe. No, it's gone. Ah. That was a good fish. That was a bass, I think. A little bit unceremonious, another eel foul hook flying looks a bit. Yeah. It's not great to see. Let's try and get him back in. So he'll make his way into the sea. They're tough little buggers these. There's a boat out there probably working quarter of a mile away. Always get a little bit despondent when you see that. Yeah, they've got the nets down. Probably after the sole. I wonder how many fish get through there. Well, thanks very much for watching. Not the best days fishing, of course, but I think fishing at night is going to give you a big advantage here as well. I'm hoping that the sea conditions are going to clear up enough to get back on the lures for the bass. I hope you're out there enjoying your fishing. Let us know how you're getting on. Um, love to hear about your catches as well.